did you hear about Rodriguez? The singer songwriter. Singer. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah, he's gone. Eighty one. I didn't know. I did not hear that. Spewing. Did you Great watch? Story. He's got that famous yeah, documentary, yeah, searching, what, for, searching Sugar Man. for Sugar Man. Yeah, yeah, that was incredible. That mm. that's worth a watch. Oh yeah, he won some awards. Yeah, chuck it on your list. <laughs> I got really lucky actually. I was on my way to Cape Town, yeah, at the airport, and I had a selection of things to watch. And I thought, oh, you know, the, the searching for Sugar Man had been on there for a while. Had no idea what it was about. So that's one mm. reason why I hadn't watched it. Yep. I bang it on. Mm. The first scenes are all the amazing, iconic images of Cape Town. <laughs> Literally what I'm flying into. Of course. Uh, so that got me going. I was super excited. It's got these, I think it's called Chapman Peak Drive, which is a really famous road that's carved into the mountain there mm. outside of Cape Town. And Cape Town's a beautiful looking city. They've got this. Like little mountain in the middle of the city called Lion's Head that you can climb up and get a beautiful view of the city. And it's also right next to Table Mountain. Mm. And so those are the scenes at the beginning of the movie, uh, yeah. the documentary. And essentially it's about two South African fans who are looking for, they like this artist called Rodriguez and yeah. there's no information. No one knows what he looks like. No one knows um, where he comes from, he's never toured, and they're trying to hunt down who this guy is and they find him in Detroit in the US and he has no idea about how big he is in South Africa. Wow. Such a good story. It's a great story. And it helps you understand apartheid in South Africa as well. I didn't know t- any of it. Mm. And I think that's one right reason why he he resonated so heavily in the US because he's a Mexican or of, of he's got Mexican parents. I think he was quite marginalised when he was growing up in Detroit. Yeah. And so he sung a lot about, um, you know, sort of equal rights and, and, and things of that nature, equality. Yeah, and I think that resonated with the South African audience. Yeah. How old was he? He would have been would have been pretty damn old by this point, right? He was eighty one when he died. Yep. So apparently, he sold more albums than Elvis in South Africa. What? So he was huge. That's insane. And then he never he only toured there. So he released his two albums in nineteen seventy. It was Cold Fact. And 1971, coming from reality. Mm-hmm. Yep. I think I prefer Cold Fact. I haven't listened to him for a long time. But anyway, the record company went went under in 71 after he released his second album. He, he sold nothing in the US. He was actually reasonably big in Australia. And I he actually know. toured Australia when like soon after he'd released those albums. He did. He toured with Midnight Oil and stuff in, oh, I don't know if it was, he has toured with Midnight Oil, but I don't know who he toured with when he came over here. In well, 75. Well, there's a live album in 1981 called Rodriguez Alive, Australia. What is that? There you go. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, because I think he gave it away, it must have been mid-80s where he gave the music career away. Um, I think it was earlier. I thought it was early, but I mean, if he's been to, if he's touring Australia in '81, he must still be going. Rodriguez quit his musical career in 1976, purchased a derelict house in a Detroit government auction for fifty dollars. Yeah, fifty bucks, in which he still lived in as of 2013. He bought a house for fifty bucks. Hell yeah! In '76, yeah, yeah, but fifty bucks. In 1976, you know. That's a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> and he still lived there in 2013. This is Until, yeah, as of 2000, in which he still lived in as of 2013. Yeah. Crazy. Oh, okay, so the live album, okay, 1981, right around the time he came back for a second tour. Okay, so he, that's when he toured with Midnight Oil. Wow. 
but he had no idea. He didn't play in South Africa until 1998. Yeah, that's mental. It's weird because it's not like he didn't know that he was being being listened to somewhere. Why is that? Because he knew he was being listened to in Australia. Yeah. Because the way Searching for Sugar Man makes it sound is that he had no idea of any notoriety Mm. that he had toured Australia. Yeah. Twice. True. Hmm. At His Best is a compilation album by American singer-songwriter Rodriguez. It was originally released exclusively in Australia by the Australian record label Blue Goose Music in 1977. Unbeknownst at the time to even Rodriguez himself, bootleg copies of the album subsequently went platinum in South Africa in the late 70s. Of the album. Well, he definitely lived in obscurity for most of his music career. Bootleg copies of this best of went platinum in South Africa. That's so sick. I need to watch it again. Yeah. Because I think a lot of his stuff was, this is maybe another reason why it was so popular, in that it was taboo. It had been banned. A lot of his songs and albums being banned by the government because yep. they were destabilizing to the yeah to the order. <laughs> Don't like that. Which is bullshit. That's so bullshit can't handle a guy singing about equality. have to ban it. It's too dangerous. Too dangerous, those concepts. Freedom, liberty. Quality. Quality. I hate that. Yeah, so... I mean, I was down south. Yeah, so I was... I was in a pet suite down in Yelling Up for the weekend. That's Luff nice. went on his first holiday. That's nice. Oh, he's been on a holiday before, not with us. He came down for the wedding, but he stayed with other people. <laughs> oh, that's great. So now I'm really thing, – things are really progressing with Luff. So now I put noise-cancelling headphones on him sometimes and I play Beethoven to him. Do you? Yeah. You're trying to get him all cultured up. What's happening? Yeah, I'm just trying to elevate his state of consciousness. 